Today I'll be reviewing three React projects. If you're interested in getting your code reviewed, then you can submit a code review request. I'm going to put the link down in the description. The first submission is from Age. This is an online wine store and it's really cool. Now you have the first page here and you can see all the available wines. You can also click on an item and you have your description, the reviews, etc. And you can also add products to the cart like this. There are also other pages and these are the category pages where you can see um, either white wine, red wine or sparkling wine. And you can also filter out the items by rating, variety, etc. So this project definitely stands out of the crowd. It's not your typical calculator project. Now let's take a look at the code. This project is made with React and it uses Redux Toolkit as well as uh, MUI for a few UI elements. The list of wines are stored in the backend API and it's basically just a JSON file. You can check it out here. And this is the list of all the wines. And this data is stored through a Redux toolkit within using this uh, create API function. Now my first remark is that this query is used everywhere in the content page and also in the product page. So if you're in a product page, you also load all the items. So a better approach would be to just query the item that you're using. So here, since, you're, since we're not using a real API, it's just a service for querying data. I looked at the API definition from Endpoint and one of the features is that you can select an item or a field. So for example, here we can add another endpoint Let's call this one get one wine and this is gonna get a, the wine index and this can be then concatenated that way we don't load all the items in the product page we can also give it a try slash one and you only uh, the second element i guess now a more general uh, proposition for me would be to split the data and the UI a tiny bit more and you can do that by using Redux Toolkit to its fullest. For example, in the category page, we do the filtering here inside the component and that's actually a very good use case for Redux Toolkit. So you can just add another method or another query with new filters and basically move out all this filtering logic to the backend. Now moving to the code, one thing that I noticed is that there are a lot of console logs. Now I also use console log for debugging but leaving it in the code, especially uh, that many, I think it doesn't give the best impression. Now I also noticed that there are a lot of instances of using the delete keyword. I'm personally not the biggest fan of it. I would rather use an array and filter out the items than using an object and deleting properties from it. I'm also a big fan of TypeScript. I always use TypeScript. I'm used to it and it really helps uh, when I'm inside a component just to have the prop types defined on the top and it just kind of creates this boundary I just think within that component. I also noticed that there's a lot of use rep in some places I was not really sure what the goal of it was. For example here in the category page I think we can just use normal constants now, generally speaking, the code is pretty clean and easy to follow and the project has a really good structure. So I could find anything I was searching for very easily. The UX is also really good. Uh, everything works in the site as expected. Uh, but when it comes to the UI, I think you can consider elevating it a little bit by using an existing UI library like Chakra UI or uh, Manti just to give it a clean polish. And when you're using UI library, it's also way less CSS code, so it really makes your life easier. Now the project is really impressive and shows a lot of commitment, and it's too bad that it's not that well packaged. For example, the readme is almost empty, so I think the readme could have a description of the project, have some screenshots, some features, some design, design decisions, library that you used, and also maybe a link to a live preview so that people don't have to clone the project, install dependencies just to see how it's working. I hope uh, my feedback could be helpful to you. Now the next project comes from Cardas and this is his online CV and it's really cool. Now this is the CV, it has a really nice UI. I like the colors, the layout, the icons, 
and it just looks very professional clean and modern and another cool thing about it is that it's responsive so if it's on mobile it's gonna look something like this and here in the certificates if you click on a certificate id you can verify the certificate this is made with next.js with the pages router and it's basically all in one page which i think is completely fine since this is just a static website and next.js is a good choice for that because it's uh, server-side rendered or statically generated. Now one thing that I noticed is that the project has a lot of unused files and dependencies as well probably because you've used a template which is completely fine but I think you don't need to have these trcp files around here and you can also get rid of a lot of dependencies that aren't unused. Now jumping to the code I've seen that there are a lot of empty class names so I will just remove those and there is also a lot of keys. Keys are normally used when you provide an array inside JSX and this is not the case here. Now one, another thing that I noticed is that the data is inside the UI. I personally prefer to split between the data and the UI. For example here we have a list of all the certificates. I would just define an array for that and basically map them here. This will take a bit more effort to set up but once you have it you can easily add skills and add certificates and they will be rendered automatically. And this is what I've done in my own personal website, in my about page, for example, in experience, I have my previous jobs and the skills that I had been using at that job. And for that, I just have an array of objects, one for each entry. And this way it's very easy for me to just change the dates or add new entries and just keeping it up to date. Another small thing that I've noticed is that when I cloned the repository, I could not install it. Uh, I received an error, so I had to run npm install dash dash force. So there may be something wrong with the package log file or the dependencies. Other than that, it's really cool. I hope my feedback could be helpful. Now the third project comes from Richard and this is a movie rating website. Now you can search for a website, for example, June and you can submit a review. Now, first thing I noticed is that it doesn't really work. I always get this error, so I think something is broken probably in the back end. Another thing that I noticed is not working are these categories here. It just seems like nothing changes when I click on them. And also if I reload the page, in the beginning it's just loading. Now jump into the code, I can see here that some components are really big for example this one movies list it's almost 300 lines long so i would prefer to move a bit of the code outside of here for example start by mode this is a function that sorts the movies and here it's using use callback and actually every time that you don't have any dependency inside this use callback you can just move it out of the function so sort by mode just come up here or maybe create a utils file a folder and put in all these methods and there you have it it's basically the same thing and you don't have to use use callback here i'm noticing for example a lot of duplicated code and here we're just filtering out by genre so what we can do is say if it's action or figure or animation and just like that and then you can add includes you can do genre. That's it. And actually, I'm seeing here you don't really need a switch case. You can just have an if else. If the provided genre is one of these, you can just filter out, uh, filter using the genre. Otherwise, just remove all the filters. And here we have a use effect that is used for uh, loading the movies from an API. Now, personally, I prefer to have uh, the URLs in uh, env files so you can have two environment files one for production and one for dev and there you can just use the urls and here you can just have something like backend url or something like that uh, here we have a use effect with a set state uh, there's actually a great article i'm gonna link to it that shows why you should not use <laughs> use effect state for loading data from the backend and i would propose to use react query for loading the data and there's another reason for that i'm gonna to that right away here's the same thing again use effect with set state now here this 
variable variable can also be moved outside these are the translations or the displayed labels of the uh, sorts and since you're using a uh, Puma CSS which is CSS library I guess or something like that I've seen that it doesn't really fit all of your use cases and I would propose to just switch to Tailwind CSS so you can get rid of all this styling and you can also use breakpoints for having different styles. Now uh, coming here to the movie card you pass here the function uh, set list of movies this is used internally when you're making, a, making an API call to update the data that is used here and that is why I was saying to use React Query, you can manage the data completely separate from the UI. Now coming to the movie card, I'm seeing here an XOR operator, I think. To be honest, I've never, never came across one of them uh, in practice. So I'm having a bit of difficulty to understand what's happening here with the styling. Also, there is a set timeout directly inside the component, which is a big red flag, at least this inside the use effect because you should build your react components in a way that when they are called many times in a row you wouldn't have any weird side effects another thing that i'm seeing is this model ref that is used to add or remove the class is active so when the model is open you want to have this class and when it's not you don't want to have it so instead of doing that i would actually just have a normal state variable is open and use that to directly as is active inside the class name. Now inside the home component, I'm seeing that there is this code here where you set the background inside the component. That's also not the React way of doing it. So we'll just pass it here as a style. And here, this is duplicated code. I've seen it in another component. So you can have your own, if you wanna write your own hook for uh, dark mode, you can define it in a utils folder and just use it in the components. But if you use Tailwind CSS, you also don't need to define this, this hook yourself because you already have a, a selector for the dark theme. Now text style I'm seeing is the same thing here. Actually, you don't need it to be here. You can just move it inside of here. Other than that, the website is really cool. It's really modern looking. And oh, I just broke it. <laughs> so thanks for your submission and I hope that I can help.